Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff Porter from Roll for New GM. There is a new uh, update to the OGL situation that's going on. There's a new uh, message out. This time it comes from Kyle Brink. Um, I had to kind of look around, figure out, because I hadn't really heard his name before, but I guess he's pretty new um, within like the last couple of months at Wizards. So it's... I don't know, it's kind of interesting that he's coming out and making this statement. So we're going to kind of go through, I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on it, what it means, and where I'm at uh, personally with D&D at the time. So the post is called A Working Conversation About the OGL. Hi, I'm Kyle Brink, the executive producer on D&D. It's my team that makes the game we all play. D&D has been a huge part of my life long before I worked at Wizards and will be for a long time before I'm done. My mission, and that of the entire D&D team, is to help bring everyone the creative joy and lifelong friendships that D&D has given us. Okay. These past days and weeks have been incredibly tough for everyone as players, fans, and stewards of the game. We can't and we won't let things continue like this. I am here today to talk about a path forward. Okay, well, it might be too late for a path forward at this point. Let's hear him out. Uh, first, though, let me start with an apology. We are sorry. We got it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Our language and requirements in the draft OGL... Okay, so they haven't gotten away from this point before before we continue on the draft. It had a, a contract attached with the draft. And there's been multiple people, multiple videos who have talked about you're not going to send a contract with a draft. <laughs> Which, So they're still trying to kind of backtrack on the whole idea that it was just a draft and uh, I, that's just not the case. So our language and requirements in the draft OGL were disruptive to creators and not in support of our core goals of protecting and cultivating an inclusive play environment and limiting the OGL to TTRPGs. Then we compounded things by being silent for too long. Yeah, you did. You made things worse by not coming out and making a statement for days. We hurt fans and creators when more frequent and clear communications could have prevented so much of this. Or not sending certain creators a contract with the new OGL. Kind of a kind of a crap move. Starting now, we're going to do this a better way, more open and transparent for our entire community of creators. With the time to iterate, to get feedback, to improve. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's how we do it for the game itself. So let's do it that way for the OGL too. We listen to you and then we will share with you what we've heard, much like we do in our unearthed arcana in one D&D playtest. This will be a robust conversation before we release any future version of the OGL. So this is the whole what it's better to beg forgiveness than ask permission um so they're just completely contradicting themselves at this point because if they wanted to have the clear communication and the conversation should have done that first you shouldn't have been uh sending out all these little contracts and the new ogls to to certain people and then when it released you know you going uh oh, we were kidding it's just it's really frustrating they're acting like we're all a bunch of children and uh just kind of insulting our intelligence <sighs> here's what to expect number one on or before friday january 20th we'll share new proposed ogl documentation for your review and feedback much as we do with playtest materials again probably should have led with that so Friday, uh, we'll definitely be up and about and uh, waiting for this um, so we can do a video on it. 
Uh, number two, after you review the proposed OGL, you'll be able to fill out a quick survey, much like unearthed Arcana playtest feedback surveys. It will ask you specific questions about the document and include open form fields to share any other feedback you have. Number three, the survey will remain open for at least two weeks and will give you advance notice before it closes so that everyone who wants to participate can complete the survey. Then we will compile, analyze, react to, and present back what we heard from you. I, I, saying it now, you don't think this is what you should have done first? Ugh. Finally, you deserve some stability and clarity. Do we? We have committed to giving creators both input into and room to prepare for any update to the OGL. Also, there's a ton of stuff that isn't going to be affected by an OGL update. So today, right now, we'll lay out all of the areas that this conversation won't touch. Any changes to the OGL will have no impact on at least these creative efforts. So when I was reading through these, we'll go through them point by point, but this wasn't really anything that people were concerned about, except for the last parts. Your video content. Whether you are a commentator, streamer, podcaster, live play cast member, or other video creator on platforms like YouTube and Twitch and TikTok, you have always been covered by the Wizards fan content policy. The OGL doesn't and won't touch any of this. Again, I didn't hear much outrage or complaints about making videos. Your accessories for your owned content. No changes to the OGL will affect your ability to sell minis, novels, apparel, dice, and other items related to your creations, characters, and worlds. Again, <laughs> items related to your creations. If we create a character or something, wh what? <laughs> Non-published works, for instance, contracted services. You use the OGL if you want to publish your works that reference 5th edition content through the SRD. That means commissioned work, paid DM services, consulting, and so on aren't affected by the OGL. Wasn't hearing much stuff about consulting pay dm services um so again i i just feel like this is just stuff that wasn't really necessary uh vtt content any updates to the ogl will still allow any creator to publish content on vtts and will still allow vtt publishers to use ogl content on their platform so you can still play on the on a vtt Thanks, Wizards. DMs Guild content. The content you release on DMs Guild is published under a community content agreement with Dungeon Masters Guild. This is not changing. DMs Guild, they have a separate thing worked out. You can use uh, basically anything from their, uh, what, what would you call it? Their, you know, the worlds, their locations, stuff like that. DMs Guild has never really been a great choice anyways. Uh, I mean, 50% is a hefty, hefty royalty to pay. Um, and I didn't hear a lot of people worried about DMs Guild. Your OGL 1.0a content. Nothing will impact any content you have published under OGL 1.0a. That will always be licensed under OGL 1.0a. Again, we weren't worried about stuff that was already out there. We were worried about stuff we were right in the middle of. We were worried about stuff we were just about to finish. We were worried about stuff that was already on Kickstarter. I just feel like they're making a, a bunch of fluff to try to make this sound better. Your revenue. There will be no royalty or financial reporting requirements. So this is something new. This is something that... There was a lot of backlash too, especially report. Like, who does Watsi think they are? They, the IRS. We have to report everything that we do to you. Like, even if there is royalties, fine. Let us pay the royalty without you. 
So that's new. That's something that we'll have to go into. I'm sure they'll go into more of that on Friday or, you know, whenever they put out the next, um, the next statement. Uh, your ownership of the content, you will continue to own your content with no license back requirement. So again, this was in the draft uh, that we got to own our content, but there was that clause that said, oh, by the way, uh, we can also take this content and republish it. Do it. So with the contract, you were signing away your right to ownership. So you had ownership, but if you signed it away, there was that clause that said that oh, we could take it. So again, that's nothing. Uh, that's all from me for now. You will hear again from us on or before Friday as described above. And we look forward to the conversation. Kyle Brink, executive producer, Dungeons and Dragons. So again, I, I just don't think that this says much other than, oh shit, we better backtrack a little bit and, uh, we might've really screwed ourselves. So we better make things right. Um, as for Kyle Brink, uh, like I said, I, I was kind of curious and I was looking for him. Um, and it seems like he just kind of started within the last few months. So it just feels like they're throwing him out there. Like, go make a statement. They'll like you. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know. I just feel like he's being thrown out there to kind of calm the nerves. Like I'm the new guy guys. I, Hey, the, I don't know what they're up to, but you know, Hey, we're all cool. We're all good. As for the statement itself, I just feel like this is another fluff thing. They do seem to admit um, some fault. Now it's not just, they're not just blaming us and saying that we're overreacting like the last statement. I still don't think that this really smooths things over at all. Um, so like I said at the beginning, as for me, um, looking at Paizo, looking at Kobold Press, looking at all these uh, third-party publishers who are doing their own thing. Um, me and my team at Astro Door Gaming, we've started putting together our own game uh, as well, and we're going to put out our own rule set. Um, so there's going to be a ton of stuff coming out, and I think that's a good thing. I think you know you'll be able to find a system that you like, or you know take a couple pieces from here and there. And uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with. Um, as for D and D. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'll never, ever play D&D again. I don't think that would be uh, an honest answer. Um, as for now, I can say, you know, for the foreseeable future, um, I will be focusing more on my own game, um, most likely making content for Paizo and Cobalt Press's stuff. Um, so my name's going to be out there. I'm going to be making a lot of supplements and my own stuff. Um, not for D and D this isn't to say that in a year or two or three or four, whenever it is, um, I won't go back and, and play a game of D and D with my friends. Um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, I'll never play it again. Uh, cause honestly, that's just not true. Um, but I can say that I think there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out. I can say that uh, I'm going to be making content. I'm going to be putting my um, creative writing ability to other projects. Um, yeah, so I, I think that that's probably how a lot of you feel. I, I, I know it's all fire and brimstone right now, and I'll burn it down. I'll never go back. Um, but, I mean, you know, in a couple of years from now, Playing a game of D&D, you might go, oh, yeah, this was fun. Um, but for the foreseeable future, like I said, I think I'm going to throw my hat out in the ring, try my own stuff, and uh, and go from there. I th and, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a series, too, where we kind of go through a bunch of different systems. And I'm looking at Cypher system. I'm looking at uh, when Paizo and Cobalt Press's stuff comes out, I'm going to be looking at that. Um, so there's a lot of cool things out there. Um, D and D was just kind of the, you know, the big one. It was easy to make content for because there was so much demand. There was so much player base, but, um, yeah. So as for this statement, I think it's just kind of, uh, try to soften things over until Friday and, uh, and stick Kyle Brink out there to be like, Hey, 
we can't we can't show our faces. Will you go out and and say something? So I I just I feel like this is uh, a huge fluff piece. There is you know the one thing here at the end about no financial reporting requirements stuff like that that I think is interesting. But again, we need to see the what it looks like in the OGL if there's another contract if we have to sign into it and what all of that means um so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below um let me know if you're going to be looking at other systems what if you and your table are making a new system um and what's going on with that um so i i think we'll be back friday when they release the next statement we'll talk about it um, remember to like, subscribe, uh, gonna be having a bunch of cool content and, uh, until next time, friends.